Hello, thank you for joining me today. I'm Amanda Fowler of, of Inspiring in Kin, and in today's video, we are going to be making a circle easel card. This is um, a big six inch card. Um, the camera does not, <laughs> does not like, there we go. It's because there's so much white on the card. Hopefully it's focused and is, is showing well now. Um, it's a really, really straightforward card to make. It stands like so and folds flat for the post. So I'm going to get the camera turned around and we will get crafting. So before we get started, I just want to show you this card. Um, which came from one of my lovely customers, Mandy. And this is the inspiration for today's supersized card. Um, this obviously is a Christmas card and it's a circle easel. And it stands like so. If I tilt it, you'll be able to see um, how the mechanism works. And then it folds flat to post. It's a really straightforward uh, card to make. And uh, I'm going to show you a few hints and tips and a few products that will make it easier for you. Um, I'm going to be using circle dies. But if you don't have those, you could use uh, plates and bowls of, of various sizes to cut things out. But dies make it, oh, so much easier. So thank you, Mandy, for this. So let me show you the products. Um, the papers I'm going to show you are from Celebration. They're called Flight and Airy. They're free with a qualifying purchase during January and February 2024. So um, this is beautiful papers. They're really soft sort of watercolour images. You've got birds and florals and colour wash. Um, and trees. Oh, sorry, that's like a quatrefoil image. Lots of images that you can fussy cut. Lots of florals. There we go. And then you can see this is <laughs> this is the one that I've used for today. And as you can see, I've been cutting things out. <laughs> um, really, really beautiful papers. So they're the papers. Now the dies that I'm using are these ones and they're called the deckled circle dies they're not actually in a catalog they're part of our online exclusive offering so whenever you're shopping um, at my online store then do check out uh, all of the new and the specials and so on and you'll you'll find them there now this is a set of 14 dies which is a huge number of dies and you can see how they're designed to sort of layer one on top of the other and this biggest one is six inches which is amazing and it will fit through most standard cutting uh, die cutting machines fits in our standard cut and emboss machine. Um, but it's brilliant because that is a huge, huge size of card that we're going to be using and making today. And we've got a little bit of embossing, time-worn type. I've done a whole one piece of stamping on this card, <laughs> which is this. It's from Notes of Nature. And it says, today is all about you. Happy birthday. I've stamped that in fresh freesia. And then I've got lots of circles. And we've got some uh, sparklies as well. So these are the faceted gems. And those are the rhinestones. I haven't quite figured out which ones I'm going to use yet. And I've got some, uh, some fussy cut pieces. So this is going to be a really quick video because it's such a straightforward um, card to make. So let me just run through the components of the card. So you need two of your largest circles. That's for the front and the back. Um, I've got those in soft sea foam. Then for the front, I've gone one smaller circle in fresh freesia. 
and then another circle, another uh, size down um, in basic white, and that's got the time-worn type on it. Then for the mechanism, um, let me grab this. So for the mechanism, this is actually the same size as the fresh freezer layer. So it's one size down. And what I've done is I've taken a piece of folded card and put the die cuts of uh, the circle die on it. Hang on, let me grab the right size. Uh, that one. And when I've run it through the die cutting machine, I have left a little tiny bit of a gap. I'll bring it up to show you. Hopefully we'll be able to see. A little tiny bit of a gap at the top, which means I've actually got a joined, joined circles. Now, I'm not using it for this this time. But that would actually make a great card. And you can make a wobble card and all sorts of things. So we'll come back to that another day. <laughs> but for today, this is the mechanism. So the way that we make it uh, stand is we fold one of these pieces in half. Now, you can do all kinds of measuring and um, get your ruler out and do it perfectly. Or <laughs> you can bend this over and I'll bring it up in the air because it's kind of easier to do that. And what I'm trying to do is get it so that the edges, so this edge and these edges match up. Because if you do that, can you see, it will mean that that score line is exactly in half. Now, I have tried, <laughs> I did try measuring it, and it goes into sixteenths and eighths, and, and I know that, as a general rule, we don't like those kinds of measurements. So, <laughs> so just folding it back on itself gently until it lines up is the way to go about it. And actually then it won't matter what kind of size circles you've got. So that is the mechanism. How quick and simple is that? So let's just get this stuck into the base. So I'm going to take the flat circle and put loads of glue on that. I'm using my trusty Tombow, which is my favorite glue. Um, but obviously any other kind of glue is, is gonna work. Because this is a moving card, they make sure it's a good strong glue. And then the important thing is, obviously, this bit in inside doesn't want to stick to anything because it's going to move. So the next piece is the folded piece, and you're going to put glue on there. Then we're going to take the front of the card and pop it down. And what you're looking for is to line up the two circles so that it makes a proper card. So you've got a front and a back. Now, I mentioned this earlier, these decalled circles are not symmetrical. So you may find that they don't line up perfectly. That's absolutely fine. They don't need to, um, but they need to be aligned so that, you know, they're not kind of skew with. So if you then just hold this up, you will see 
that your card will stand. Okay. Now, at the moment, it's not actually going to stand anywhere because it's got no bit to prop it up. But we're going to decorate the front first. So we've already got these layers. So that one is going to go like so. And then I'm going to take, so here is one of the birds and I fussy cut that. Now you will see on this paper that there are these beautiful black little berries. And there are none of those on my fussy cut piece because life was too short for me to do that. So I do love to fussy cut, but even I have my limits. So <laughs> I didn't cut the berries. Um, so I'm going to put a few uh, dimensional pads on these now. And I'm just going to use some of the little ones. Obviously, you can cut the bigger ones down. Um, but I just like having two sizes. It just means then I don't have to worry about cut, cutting too much. Oh, let's put another one there on his body. Okay. So we'll lift off that. Now, obviously I'm working with these beautiful papers, um, but you could use uh, different papers or die cut images, stamped images. You don't even have to have anything cut. You can you could just stamp onto your layer. So there's so many different things that you can do with with this. Now, just be aware if you're using the time worn type embossing folder, there is text on it, and you do want your text to be. Um, legible you don't want it to um, be upside down and then I'm just going to pop this down here and actually let's see yeah I'm just going to pop it there one in the middle down there like so and then get this stuck onto the front of the card just make sure where the top is you don't you don't want to spend the time doing all that die cutting and then stick it upside down okay so that is the front of the card now, in order to make the stand, you need something, or in order to make the card stand, you need for there to be something that stops it sliding down. So on Mandy's card, which I've now <laughs> buried somewhere, there we go. Um, on Mandy's card, she has cut a little, um, another circle and then cut a wavy edge because it's like the snow to prop it up. And then she's used uh, these rhinestones. So I'm going to do the same. I've already cut and embossed this piece and I'm actually going to give it a bit of a wavy edge. like so and it's going to stick down here like so now that on its own and i appreciate this is white on white so it's not going to be easy for you to see on its own it's just not going to be enough to keep that propped up so what i'm actually going to do is put some flowers here and put them on dimensionals as well 
so that it um, stands stands um, st <laughs> I would say stands prouder, but it actually holds its space a bit better. So I've got uh, the flowers and I cut multiples and then an extra one there so let's just stick that down so all of the little scraps when you're when you're fussy cutting quite often you end up with little pieces from like the edges and the corners you can always use those for all sorts of different things so that's what I've done there I've just used like a little scrap and on this piece, I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals. So that kind of sits on top. So it just means then that that will prop up the, uh, the stand. And then I've got even another one here that I've um, fussy cut. And I'm going to use one of the rhinestones. I was going to use the really big ones, but I think these little ones will work for the centre. And I'm just going to lay that one on top of the other. So what it will do is kind of butt up against there. So I'll bring it up close to the camera so you can see. So we've got obviously the flowers that I've cut here. And then I've cut a second one of these Calypso coral flowers and layered it. And they're actually on dimensionals. But I'm also, let me just see whether that will be enough to hold it. I think what I'm actually going to do is just trim that down a little bit more and then I'm going to put this on dimensionals as well. So it's just to make sure that the card doesn't slide. So we'll put it all on dimensionals. And the amount of... Um, card that you've got here on the front will mean that that you need a good strong stand for it um if you just had a really thin piece of card and you didn't have any dimensionals on it it might not be strong enough to hold back the card so sometimes you have to go back in and and add a little bit extra so I'm going to pop that just there, like so. And then this piece is going to stand. Oh, that's going to lift up like that. So let me <laughs> let me lift it up so you can see. I want to tip it that way so you can see the mechanism but you can also see the layers here and all of that is stopping this piece from sliding sliding forwards now you can um, have it so that it stands even further back the downside of, of having that is you have less and less space to write on so this way, we've got all this area here to write on. And you've got this beautiful card to, to see and stand. And it's and it's it's yeah, it's just stands really, really easily. So that is all from me today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed making this circle easel card. All of the products that you've seen today, you can find um, 
on my blog, if you pop over to www.inspiringinking.com, you'll find uh, clickable links to my online store and you can also sign up for my mailing list there. Please do subscribe here on YouTube as well. And uh, that way you will always be the first to know when I have some more creative inspiration for you. I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.